Hi, and welcome to a video about the law of exponential change. This is a calculus video that connects the separable, separable differential equation here to the equation you should be already familiar with that is exponential growth and decay. So what the law of exponential change says is that if y changes at a rate proportional to the amount present, that is if dy dt equals ky and y equals y sub 0 one time equals 0, so this is your initial amount, then you're going to get the equation y equals y sub 0 times the quantity e to the kt. The constant k is the growth constant if k is greater than 0 and the dk decay constant if k is less than zero. Now the most, um, maybe the most recognizable equation that you have dealt with is the one that deals with um, money and continuously compounded <clears throat> accumulation of money which would be the amount accumulated equals to the principal times e to the rt and a lot of times this is referred to as the PERT equation. So this is exponential growth. Also, um, if you're in science and you look at bacteria growth or the growth that happens in a petri dish when you're doing an experiment in science, that would fit exponential growth. Also, carbon dating, half-life, that kind of thing, that's exponential decay. And also, population growth, things like doubling time, tripling time, those are also exponential growth that would follow this law of exponential change. So these are just some examples that you've already seen before that fit this model. So it's really not something new, but we're going to connect it to calculus. We're going to connect the derivative to the growth model that you're used to seeing. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that the derivative equation, dy dt, or the rate of change is proportional to the amount present at any time. We're going to show that's connected to this equation, your exponential growth or decay equation, or the amount that you end up with is equal to the amount you start with times the exponential piece. All right, in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is separate and integrate. If we're going to separate the variables here, we need to multiply both sides by dt to get the dy and the dt separated. And then we're going to have to divide by the y so that the y is over here on the side with the y. So if we do that, the dt's cancel, we're going to end up with 1 over y dy equals k times dt. So what we've done just in that piece is we have separated the variables, the y's and the dy's are together, and k is a constant, it's just a number, so we're going to leave it on the side over here with the dt. There are no t's, but that's okay, we don't need any t's. If there were t's, we'd put them over here. So we've separated, now we're going to integrate each side. When we integrate the left-hand side, you end up with a natural log of the absolute value of y plus c. And when we integrate the right-hand side, since k is a constant, you end up with k times t plus c. And since we have two constants, let's call this one c sub 1, and we'll call this sub c sub 2. All right? Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to solve for y at this point. As we solve for y, we want to consolidate these constants. So let's go ahead and do that first. To consolidate the constants, we're going to subtract the c sub 1 from this side. So we're going to end up with the natural log of the absolute value of y equals all this stuff over here. And then we're going to put these two constants together. And we're just going to say, you know what, since a constant minus a constant gives us a new constant, we're going to call that c sub 3. So right here, we really haven't done much, but we've kind of cleaned things up. We still want to solve for y. In order to solve for y, we need to make each side, the left-hand side, the power on an e, and we need to make the right-hand side the power on an e, because what we want to do is get rid of this natural log piece right here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And now what we can do is we can proceed to simplify. Remember, the natural log and the exponential, those are inverses, so we're left with the absolute value of y equals, and then we can use the property of exponents to rewrite this e to the kt times e to the c sub 3. And again, what we can do here is we can say, okay, e to a constant is just a new constant. We're going to call that c sub 4. So at this point, we need to get rid of the absolute value signs. In order to do that, we're going to say y equals plus or minus 
This turns into C sub 4, so we're going to call this C sub 4 times e to the kt. And again, what we can do with the plus or minus, we can wrap all of that up together into a new constant, call that C sub 5. So what we end up with, finally, is y equals C sub 5 times e to the kt. Now, if you compare that to our original equation, y equals y naught times e to the kt, these two things look pretty much the same. So basically what we have here is your constant, this constant that has popped up and kind of morphed as we work through the problem, that's actually your y naught. So we are there. We have our exponential. We've transformed this separable differential equation that we started with right up here at the top. We have transformed it to this. Now the one thing you want to know as you work through these problems, depending on what textbook you're using, sometimes you're going to see this where they use a y naught, or um, at times you're going to see y equals a times e to the kt, um, and that a just stands for the amount that you start with. So either of these um, are going to be what you see as you work through these problems. So I hope this makes a little more sense now that you understand how these two things are connected. We're going to work through some examples. This is definitely a relationship you want to memorize. So remember, if you see dy over dt equals ky, you know that this k is going to be exactly the same number as your y equals y naught e to the kt equation. So if this is a 5 or a 4, you can just grab it and put it right in there. You're just going to be needing that initial amount, that starting amount, to get the rest of the equation. Alright, so that's the video you've got for the law of exponential change. I hope you enjoyed it.